Greetings, everybody. My name is Pastor Julia, and I'm the pastor of Junie United United Methodist Church here in Altoona. We welcome you to our time together today. Today, we're going to talk about defying gravity. And as the story unfolds, you'll be finding out more about how I'm referencing gravity to the biblical equation of the rich young ruler. So before we begin today, what I would like to do is share with you the gospel lesson. Um, for this particular one, I'm going to share with you Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 13. Or I'm sorry, I got the wrong one. Beginning with verse 16. Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 16. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said, well, all of these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, they asked Jesus, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, as we have come to hear your word today, let us not be too busy to listen. Open our eyes to what gravity is. Open our souls to feel what gravity is good and discern what is bad gravity. And Lord, as we talk about gravity, may we go forward to live for you. Because when we keep you central in our lives, we indeed are defying gravity. So speak to us once more your word and let our hearts be changed to be more like you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, as we come together and learn from what Jesus has to share with us, we indeed are going to talk about gravity. And in particular, I will be referring to one of Tom Berlin's books. It's called Defying Gravity. Defying Gravity, and it is written by Tom Berlin if you would like to pull up the book for yourself. So, Here's what I'm going to ask you. Have you ever felt pulled one direction or the other? It indeed is a strange feeling. Maybe you can't see the source with the physical eye, but that force, it pulls on you. Isaac Newton was intrigued by this theory known as gravity. In fact, much of what we know comes to us by God working through the life of Isaac Newton. Looking at Isaac's history, his father passed away only three months before he was born. And he was born on Christmas of 1642. It sounds like eventually Isaac went to live with his grandmother. From 1655 to 1659, Isaac Newton was educated at the King's School in Grantham. 
And when he was 17, his mother removed him from school. She thought that Isaac should be a farmer. But he did not like that. And in response, the admissions representative at the King's School requested to his mother that Isaac return to school. While well, in June 1661, Isaac Newton was sent to the University of Cambridge. It is sometimes told that as he was reading a book under an apple tree, the apple fell down from the tree next to him. And that started Isaac Newton's curiosity of seeking to understand gravity. As Isaac explored this topic, it is noted that he often believed that God, who in his eyes was an ultimate mathematician, was whispering ideas in his ear so that then Isaac could share his gifts with the world. Which makes sense because... Perhaps he did have a gift, and as he most certainly did, as we see life unfold for him. Well, according to the Oxford Dictionary, gravity can be defined as a force that attracts a body towards the center of the earth, or toward any other physical body having mass. At, gravity can also be defined as something extreme or of alarming importance. Or seriousness. As I refer to Tom Berlin's book, Tom reminds us of the importance of gravity. In fact, he tells us that we can be reminded of gravity when we go to cut up an onion. Or I'm going to add the example of an apple or make a pie. What if we didn't have gravity? Wouldn't that really be fun? Really? <laughs> there would be apples in the air as we tried to cut them. And onions, they would be floating all over the place. And yeah, there would be no keeping them in the bowl or the pan that we're trying to keep on the counter. But Berlin, in his book, he reminds us that just as gravity exists in the natural world around us, so does gravity exist in the financial world, and the spiritual world. However, when we look at the real world, the natural world, financial gravity especially, could especially have a negative or a positive connotation. As many people say, incorrectly, that money is the root of evil. However, if we go and look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, here's what it says. The love of money is the root of all evil. I suspect that all of us know what it is to feel the gravity connected to money. Think about the gravity you feel, especially when you look at your checking account and the balance is lower than you anticipated. Or maybe you got that credit card statement and you find the bill is much larger than what you ever could have imagined. These are examples of the negative effects of financial gravity. However, there can be other events that increase the gravity of having money to spend. For instance, that feeling you get when you walk into the shopping mall at Christmas time. And there it is, all those beautiful possibilities before you. That is a different kind of gravity. Today, the gospel lesson shares with us how one young man has been affected by the gravity of money and possessions. Here's how the story unravels in the gospel lesson today. The rich young ruler one day came to Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? Well, first of all, Jesus said, keep the commandments. So, he went through the commandments in his head, perhaps, and he said, do not murder. Check, I got that one. Do not commit adultery. Check, I got that one. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Yeah, I, I haven't done both of those. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. 
check. Well, you know some of the other ones have no other gods before me. Well, maybe. That depends upon the context, especially with this story. The rich young man said to Jesus, I have kept all of these commandments. What do I still lack? But Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give your money to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me, Jesus says. Jesus was inviting him to be a disciple. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad and grieving, for he had many possessions. In other words, the young man could not give up the small g, God of money, and possessions. They were little gods that came between him and the relationship with the real big G God. It sounds to me really that this young man wanted to live the godly life but he just could not give up those possessions and money to follow Jesus what I would now like us to do is examine how life has changed in our culture in the past 2,000 years since the day of Jesus think about how things are different now we have electricity Gravity has been defined. We now have the invention of the light bulb. We have technology. And we have come a long way. But when it comes to human actions, have we really? I find it ironic that 2,000 years after the time of Jesus, and we are still dealing with the same sins that were dealt with in the days of Jesus. Today, we still deal with wanting the best for ourselves, being selfish. You see, the gravity of the self kept this man, this young man, from following Jesus. In summary, the young man was following the kingdom of self rather than the kingdom of God. The kingdom and culture of self keeps us from embracing the better life because we get in the way. Ourselves get in the way. But Jesus is calling us to not let that gravity of self overcome us. We are invited to enter the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God has come near, the gospel lesson says. Repent and believe in the good news. The words of John the Baptist. In the kingdom of self, Jesus made it clear that we cannot find the cure for our ailing souls. We continue to live in anger, selfishness, jealousy, and bitterness. It's much like our world today. We have become so concerned with ourselves that we have embraced these negative attitudes. But Jesus tells us with the kingdom of God, we can find forgiveness, love, peace, and joy beyond measure. And you know what? Jesus is that gravity that pulls us every day toward the kingdom of God. We are called to embrace what Jesus offers us. And when we do, we embrace the better life that God intends. Remember what Jesus taught us about the kingdom of heaven? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. The kingdom of God tells us not to worry but to trust in God. As Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to drink or what you're going to eat or wear. Doesn't God care about the birds in the air and the flowers in the fields? And Jesus goes on to say, paraphrased as I've already done, tomorrow is a field with enough worries of its own. The kingdom of God says, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. If you did not know, the forces of gravity are very different 
as we look at the kingdom of self and the kingdom of God. In fact, the kingdom of self and the kingdom of God are directly polar opposites. And as you can see in the gospel lesson today, Jesus really does not give this rich young man a choice. It's not a choice between the kingdom of God or the kingdom of self. It is either one or the other. Of course, Jesus prefers the kingdom of God. And to be a part of the kingdom of God, we must allow Jesus to be that gravitational pull in our lives. Remember, we are called to be in the world and not of the world. Then later in the scripture, Jesus talks about it is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than it is a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You might be saying, what does this really mean? In the days of Jesus, they had a needle gate. They had a main gate and they also had a needle gate. Now the main gate were usually connected with the city gates. But the needle gate was in buildings and it was used to protect the people from the invaders outside. I saw one when I visited the Holy Land several years ago. It was a door entry that was in this building, but it was so low that even I had to bend over as I entered. Now this low entryway was built intentionally so that people, when they tried to invade that gathering space, the camel would literally need to bend down on his knees to crawl down through that small door opening. And lo and behold, through all that happened, you'd be caught in action. But Jesus said to the young ruler, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. But just Jesus did not say it's impossible. It is hard if your God is money. However, some people are very good at managing money and keeping it in perspective, using it as a faithful disciple for God's purpose. These people generally know if they do not control their money, their money will control them. As shared in Luke 12, 48, it is noted, from everyone much is given, much will be required. And to the one who much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. The question is, does money separate you from God? You might have difficulty answering this question. So let me share with you some examples of where money can get in the way from what God intends. Are you a worry wart? Are you the person who's hyper-focused on money? Does money cause a hurricane in your life? Do you do all you can to say because you are worried about money that you can spend, cannot spend money on yourself or give it to others? The other example is the one who is climbing the success ladder. These are the folk that learn that it takes all of their income to maintain the lifestyle of appearing to be part of the rich and famous or those who are successful. This person could take extra funds and use them to climb another on society's ladder rather than paying off a credit card or giving funds to the church. Then there is a call of the wow. This would be like Black Friday. When you get to the store, you see the variety of foods, of goods, and electronics, and it becomes a want, want, want. And a shopping trip becomes so much fun, and you buy until your heart is content, until the bills start coming in. The other example is, I am the gift. Those of us in human service fields, such as social workers, teachers, people who are employed by nonprofit corporations, we often have lower salaries. We can easily find ourselves giving to others throughout the week, and the next thing we know, we are tending to give to everything else rather than participating in financial giving for the ministry that God calls us to. Remember, this is really God's money. God gives us a gift. God gives us a job. All things that we have come from God. May we go forward and let the self go and embrace the kingdom that God intends. And remember that as followers of Jesus, Jesus is to be our gravitational pull. 
We are called to be Christ-centered. So may you defy the gravity that pulled you down. And may you go forward embracing the abundant life Jesus offered you. Today, tomorrow, and throughout eternity. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, help us to defy the gravity of the world and embrace the gravity, embrace the life that you offer us. Help us to focus on the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of self. Help us to live victoriously, living in your spirit rather than getting down and out by letting money get in our way from ministry. And Lord, as we go forward, May we remember that for some, money is definitely an act of discipleship for people who love to give and give generously unto you. So Lord, I just ask that you bless the entire church. Help us to remain faithful day after day as we continue our journey with you. We ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. So go from this place being centered upon God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Go be in his peace. Amen and amen.